I got set free because I was talking and talking and talking to the Lord, and I got set free from them demons. I got set free. And I couldn't get up until I got set free. And when I got up, I was like a new person. And so I told my son, I said, you know what? That's what happened when you think you can go out there. I'm going to tell you, especially if you've been brought up in the church. Especially those women and men that have been brought up in the church and walk away from God and go out there thinking, okay, I'm going to live this life out here. I'm going to tell you, them demons, come on. Because you've been messing with God, so now you're going to mess with me. And I'm telling you, I ain't going to let you go. I ain't going to treat you like God treats you. And they don't treat you like God treats you. And if you think they're not real, I wish you would have videotaped that. If you think they're not real, they are so real. Those demons are so real. And if you read the Bible, it, it, it's in there. It tells you about demons and being possessed. They're so real. And I had to deal with them. And I had to get them off. But one thing I know about my life is that God called me a long time ago. He called me when I was out there acting a fool. He had my life covered because there are circumstances that, like I said, I should have been gone dead. There's things that I did out there. I mean, I, I went to the, went to the, go get surgery. Went for surgery. I was in a come out, I was in a coma two weeks. Two weeks I was in a coma. They told me, told my girlfriend, she gonna die. Go and get ready to bury her. Cause it's over. Her, this lady here, Diane, prayed for me, prayed for me, and she told people, don't come out to this hospital unless she's coming out here to pray for her. Don't come out here. They told my 17-year-old daughter, say, you know what? Your mom's gonna die. Go and get ready to marry her. But God had another plan for my life. And you know what? And people say, oh, that out-of-body stuff is just, that ain't true. You just, the, the, the doctors want to say, it's the it's anesthesia that you're taking, that you, you think you see God, or you think you talk to God. But let me tell you, I talk to God. I asked God. I, my, my baby was three years old at the time. And, and I was dibbling down in that world, and I told God, I said, God, I said, who is going to take care of my Christopher? My Christopher was three years old. And I remember pleading with the Lord. I said, Lord, who is going to take care of my Christopher? And that's when I woke up. And when I woke up, before I went into that hospital, it was election. I'll never forget this. It was election day in 1991 when I went into that hospital. 1993 when I went into that hospital. And when I woke up, I didn't even know who the president of the United States was. I asked the lady, I said, well, who won? who's the president? And she told me who the president did was. And I, and I said to myself right then, I said, now, I could have been dead and gone. And if I had died and gone, I was going to hell. Straight. Straight to hell. Now, we don't all the time have that privilege of having time to plead with God. Sometimes it's just straight out of here. But I know that God had called my life right then. I said, God, you've called me. You've called me right then to do something. I don't know what it is, but for me to be alive, the nurse that was um, the nurse that was in, that was taking care of me, she went on vacation, and when she came back, she walked to my room and she said, <sighs> she took a deep breath. She said, I couldn't. I, she said, I thought you were gonna be gone. She said, I thought you were gonna be dead. Cause I, I even shocked her. I had machines coming. You couldn't see me for the machines. My body was 95% poison, 95%. Only thing was keeping me alive was my heart. The doctor said, if you didn't have the heart that you had, you'd be gone. Well, that heart is Jesus. Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. But, you know, this, this thing that our pastor started, this, uh, the senior view, you know, like, again, I say, I never want to ever say anything to offend anyone or cause anyone to think, oh, she's talking about me. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm talking about what I was brought up in. And I'm going to get back on the church because I think it's so important to know this is a house of God. This is a house of God, and we've gotten so far from honoring this house. And we've gotten so far from, I mean, 
When I was a kid, and back in the day, you you had so much honor for the house of God. I mean, even to walk into the house of God was an honor. And you you know, you don't walk in looking for the presence of God. The presence of God was waiting on you already. So he's here. But the pants down here, I mean, we come in the house of God showing God our pants, our underclothes. We come in the house of God, and these are things we didn't do, and that's why I'm speaking of it. You come in the house of God with a hat on. Come in the house of God with a hat on. You know, and back in the day, you would the hat would have been knocked off your head. Or you wouldn't have even got past the threshold there to get in here with that. The children, and like I said, I'm not, I'm just talking about back in the day. If your kid is a wild one, it'll be a wild one. But back in the day, man, the, the children were under control. We were, we were hearing the word. We were not been listening to the word, but we were hearing the word. And I, you know, I would say the mind is a computer. It's a, it's a big computer. It's the greatest computer in the world. Because when, when the word goes out, maybe it's not for you, but it's stored. It's stored. And when these children, they hear what you're saying. They, they hear what you're saying. You know, and if you're not, you know, I, I don't, if you want to pray, you pray. You know, prayer is a, my mother was a prayer. She always prayed. Every time I get ready to go to bed, she always prayed. So I know that my spirit picked that up from her, this desire that I have to pray. But you know what? And from that I say, if your children don't see you praying, how do they know about praying? If we're not teaching our children to pray, what? What, 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 are, you gonna, what are they going to do? If, if they don't believe, it's like my grandchildren. If, if they don't see me serving God and see my walk, they ain't going to believe it. They ain't going to believe it. My, my, my youngest granddaughter, her dad told her that I used to drink beer. She got offended. She was offended. My grandma ain't never drunk no beer. You just lying on my grandma. My grandma ain't never drunk no beer because I've been saved long as she known. You know, long as she's been here, I've been saved. So she came home from her dad's house. No, no, my daddy's lying on you. He said you drink beer. <laughs> but you know what? The point I'm trying to make is because she's never seen me drink beer. She's never seen me do drugs. So. She's never seen me do it, so she know it's wrong. She think, well, nobody's supposed to do it because she hasn't seen me do it. She knows about drinking because her dad drinks and smokes and junk. <laughs> he does a lot of things in front of him. But she relates to me with God. And your children relate you with God. When they see you, they're saying, Oh, my mother is a Christian, or my dad is a Christian. My dad don't do this, my mom don't do that. So they're learning from you, like I learned from my mother, to pray. Because I, I saw her pray, and I saw her drink. So I learned both things. <laughs> but, it, you know, it is so important. It's so important that, you know, we set that goal for the children. That we teach them about the house of God. We teach them to respect the house of God. We teach them to pray in the house of God. Teach them that what we're doing is, is for their future. You know, we're praying that, that so when, you know, one day maybe they won't have a church house to go into, but they'll have church inside. They'll know that I can go anywhere I want. I can stand right here in front of the police and pray to God and he can hear me. You know what I'm saying? They, they know the foundation that that's lied before them, that God is real. And he will do the things that he says he's going to do. But if, if we can think that, oh, we just come to prayer and our children don't have to be involved, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You have to show them by example. You have to show them by example that prayer works. And I pray, you pray. You know, I, I really get, I get upset with my grandkids because they don't, they don't want to pray. You know, but they like to, they like what God does for it because He takes care of us. You know, when we don't have no gas.